Hello learners, today our topic of discussion is management. Uh, you are familiar with the term management as we apply it in our daily life also like time management and we also heard about this uh, in case of business activities also business organizations. So to know more about this particular concept, today we have with us Dr. Rotikanto Patak sir, Associate Professor from the Department of Management, Gohati Commerce Palace. Hello sir. Hello. Hello. So sir, we are discussing about management today. Uh, so please focus on the basic concept of management. What we exactly mean by the term management? Thank you, Deposit. Actually, the management is a very broad term. It is very difficult on the part of anybody to define it or give the concept in a very brief way. But basically, management is uh, a technique or art of managing people. Basically, management means management of people. And according to human relationist, they are of the opinion that management is nothing but an art of getting work done through people. But in modern management, one thing is added to the original concept that management is not only an art of getting things done through people, but getting things done through and with other people. That means not only through other people, that management itself must be involved in the process. So to understand management concept, we can give stress on three aspects. The management can be treated as a group activity, management can be treated as a process, and management can be treated as a separate discipline. Right. Okay? Right. So management as a group activity. That means management of an organization is done not only by a one or two people. Right, sir. It is a group activity. The efforts of all people is necessary. So management should be understood by that way. That it is a not single activity. It is not an activity done by only a single people or single individual. It is a group effort and all the group should work in a team spirit for attainment of goal or objective of the organization. Right, Secondly, management is a process. The management process starts with planning, ends with controlling. controlling. So it is a process of five functions, yes. planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Kunz and O'Donnell, they have defined that in modern management, management concept of five things, that is plan, first plan you, organize, yes. organize machine, man, people, or materials, other things, then you bring people for staffing, that is, you organize people, bring people, train people, recruit people, or pay people yes. properly, then direct the people, or move the people to do the work, and see the performance of people. So that is why management is a process. And thirdly, management can be also understood as a separate discipline. A separate discipline means a separate field of study. So management is a separate field of study like say physics, chemistry, economics, law, like that. But management is a complicated discipline because it is not a single discipline, it, it, it consists of various disciplines. It is a combination of various disciplines. In management, we find uh, mathematics, statistics, oh, economics, psychology, sociology, yes. all together form a separate field that is management. Mm -hmm. so, it is, so basically, one thing we should remember that what is management, in somebody, if somebody asks you, we should say that management is basically management of people because if we can manage people, people can manage other things. Right, yes. Behind the machines, there are people. Right. Behind the production, there are people. Behind the management of finance, there are people. So basically, the art of managing people, the technique used to manage people for the attainment of goal or objective of the organization should be understood as management. Yes, management. Okay? Right, sir. Mm -hmm. So often we heard the term administration. Mm -hmm. 
mm. but their management and administration are same or they are different things there are actually in management literature many such terms are used management and administration sometimes confused as to be the same term mm. but many authors management authors also like to make a demarcation between these two terms management and administration, management and administration. Mm. But from use point of view, in practical life, generally in government organization, government offices, we make use of the term administration. Government okay. administrator. We never say government manager. Yes, yes. Government, government administrator. Administrator. Yes, administrator. Yes. But in corporate houses, the term administration is not used. Yes. Managers. Managers. Manage, management. Yes. But there are three concepts. Some people like to say that management and administration are same particularly in small organizations, there is no difference between administration and management. Management and administration same. But some people like to say that some authors, they are of the opinion that administration is above management. Administration is policy making and thinking and management is implementation of plans and programs. So administrators are responsible for thinking function or policy making function framing policies, plans, programs, and managers are responsible for implementation of those programs. So they like to say that administration is <coughs> above management. Okay. And a third view is that the management and administration are same, no difference, it is a part of administration. Because administrator and manager together manage an organization. Okay. So basically, in big organizations or corporate organizations, we can say that there is a difference between administration and management. Then the policy makers, we can term them as administrator. And those who are responsible for implementation of various plans, programs, policies of the company, mm -hmm. they are can be termed as managers. But in small organization, proprietary organization, partnership organization, cooperative organizations, we cannot demarcate between these two terms. Right. They are same. So basically, sir, management is related with people. Means we have to, as a group work, we have to uh, work in an organization. So ah. there is a management. Mm. And yeah. besides that, uh, management is applicable in all organizations, whether in private sector or public sector. Is uh, Basically, it applies to all the organizations. All organizations, including not only private sector, public sector, but in even uh, business organization or non vivid organization. It is applicable to even tourist organization, management of say schools, uh, colleges, management of universities. So even in management of educational institutions, right, sir, management right, of uh, hospitals, and management of business organization, management of clubs, management of charitable organizations, NGOs, everywhere it is applicable. Everywhere it is. That is why Henry Fiol, who is termed as the father of administrative theory. Right, sir. Henry Fell of France, he, while developing 14 principles of management, yeah, he, 14, he, 14 principles of management, of management he categorically mentioned that my 14 principles are applicable to all trading and non-trading organizations, profit and non-profit organizations. Right. So, management is necessary, management is important, not only for those organizations which are established for economic purpose or earning of profit, but also for not non-profit organizations. Right. It is applicable to both public sectors as well as private sector or joint sector everywhere. Or it is all types of organization including proprietary organization, partnership organization, company organization, cooperative organization. But intensity, the degree of importance is different. Right. Say for management is important for very small retail organization, small trading organization yes. or proprietary organization, sole trading organization. Yes. Even for management of a pawn shop by a pan, right, sir, small right, right. retailer, he is to manage his, his business. Right, his sir. business yes, he yes. is to manage. But his degree or intensity of that yeah, is yes. different from management of a big multinational company right, or sir. company. He is the owner, he is the manager in case mm, of small mm. business. But his decisions, his implementations, his other problem aspects, finance, marketing, everything is done by him. Yes. But in big organizations, many branches, many divisions, many levels are created. Yes. So it is to some complex, complicated. 
uh, difficult. Yes. It means sorry, it's irrespective of the nature of organization, mm. management is management, safe, management is, is applicable in all cases. Management is must. Management is must, must in must. all, whether it is educational or it is hospital or any other yeah, 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 business yeah. or uh, with profit. Nothing can not. happen in business minus management. It is said that minus yes. management, nothing can happen in business. Mm. Not only in business, any in any organization, minus management is nothing. nothing. Right, sir. So management has attained a very important place nowadays. So how it has developed it has, uh, this particular subject, management? Actually, management, uh, when people, uh, if we go back to the hunting stage, when people hunting used stage. to live, yes, yes, in, yes. in those days the question of management did not come. Then people started to live in societies, it mm -hmm. forming some villages, and the agricultural period started. Yes. People came back from hunting states to agricultural states. Mm. So in, in management of the, those villages, there were some managers, village heads, village quarters, they also managed the villages. Mm. They managed. But later on, actually the modern management is the part of, is the outcome of industrialization. When industry or machine is started, large scale production started, and importance was to be given to production, finance, marketing, and many other areas, it became very difficult task for the owners to look after each and every aspect. So they used a particular class of people that is managers or management. So that way management came into the picture. We so in one sense you can say, you can say that management is the outcome or bond style of industrialization. Okay. Had there been no industrialization, no machines, I think people did not think about management. management. Oh, it evolved from various stages. It evolved. Yes. Uh, gradually, that was, that was uh, around so before 1850s. Uh, almost the management was not given much more importance. Okay. What was given importance? On industrial economics. The economics, economists in the world developed certain concepts and those concepts were used in our industries. Management was not a, treated as a separate discipline. But after 1880, when Taylor came, Henry Fuel came to the management field with their own contributions, mm -hmm. the scientific management era started. Okay. And before that pre-scientific stage, some mm -hmm. ideas were applied by some people like Robert Wayne, Charles Babeze, the, these people applied certain concepts. Right. But thing is that before Taylor and Fowl, that means before 1880, no theories of management were developed. Right. There were no formal theory. The first theory of management was provided by Frederick Winslow Taylor of America, the scientific management theory, then administrative management theory, then Max Weber's bureaucratic management. After 1930, what was uh, given importance that management of people or human relations era or social science era. Right. That in management of people, simply application of machines is not sufficient. sufficient. We should give emphasis to human aspects. That means the force which is working behind the machine right. should be given more importance. Right. So that human relations era started after 1930. Right. And after Second World War, 1950, modern management came into picture. The modern. modern management, four disciplines or four subjects have contributed to development of modern management. First is economics, okay. statistics, mathematics and computer. Okay. The application of these four branches of knowledge in management started after 1950. That modern era modern. started. So in modern management, we find psychology, sociology, that is behavior science, as well as application of computers, as well as application of mathematical formulae, statistical data and formulae, economic models, all together form the modern management. Okay. That is the modern management is, uh, in one sense you can say that modern management is undertaking a multiple approach. Multiple approach. We should not emphasis only on machines, only on computer, at the same time, psychology, industrial psychology, sociology are also equally important. Economics is equally important in management. 
statistics, mathematics, computer knowledge equally important mm. and all these things can be put together by developing certain formula in computers and analysis of data is possible for complex decision making right. through the computer and all this process in one word known is operation research operation research all this so operation research is the outcome of um, 1950 onwards modern this is modern management. Management. modern modern management so we are in a stage of modern management Did modern management definitely we are passing through different stages hunting stage agricultural yes. stage machine stage digital age now yes, digital, digital age. Age. yes sir. we have come back to yes, the digital yes, age yes. so mo we are in the modern management mm. so our students should also understand that modern management is applying the knowledge of psychology knowledge of economics knowledge of engineering knowledge of statistics knowledge of mathematics and knowledge of computers all these together a multiple approach is undertaken to solve complex complex problems for analysis of various complex data and quick prompt and accurate decision making right sir sure. which is very necessary it is very necessary yes. so different people have contributed towards the development of this particular field yeah yeah management and today we are getting the fruits of various contributions of great personalities so it's in it is passing through yes. a different stages stages and it will de definitely develop uh, it will developing Yeah, yeah, developing new concepts are added yeah. in the daily. Uh, in recent years, many after nineteen eighteen, after nineties, Tom Peter, Bob Waterman, Michael Porter, uh, Harvard Simon, uh, and before that Peter Drucker, they have contributed a lot for the development of modern management. Okay. So whether these um, uh, the theories are there, all contributions are there. Whether same uh, management styles are applied in all organizations, means in public or private. Profit earning, non. -profit. There are different organizations. Uh huh. So whether the same style of management applies in all these organizations, or there are some variations. Uh, when the organization, the nature of organization changes, the management style changes, or it remains the same. No, no, no. <laughs> good question. Good question. I appreciate your question. The same management style, same management system, same management pattern can never be followed in all our organizations. Okay. that is why it is said that management is not a true profession though it is taking the shape of a profession it is not like medicine or law yes, yes, a yes, doctor yes, uh, in you know passing from guwahati medical college can treat a patient in even in africa right sir right. or in japan yes sir but the management principles developed in japan cannot be applied in assam in toto right sir right. it needs some modification and adjustment That is why again I am telling you that Henry Fiol, while developing fourteen principles of management, he mentioned that my fourteen principles are subject to verification and modification from mm -hmm. time to time, for to make them more effective and applicable in different situations. Mm -hmm. So the situation in Japan, situation in America are not same. The situation with In in India, in India or in Assam. so same management style we cannot follow. Okay. You cannot say that we I will go to Japan and I shall train myself and I shall get some new ideas and apply in management of an, an organization in India. In total, you cannot because your right, situation, environment, the people, technology, social system, custom, working nature of people, religious faith. All these things are different. different right. So management is that is why it is said that management is basically situational or contingent. Okay. We should yes. make we should apply a contingent contingency approach in management. Yes. That means the same management principles applied in America or in Japan should be applied, should be kept intact, but with some modification. We should go to apply in our Indian organizations. Yes. Sir. Say for example, in Japan there is uh, say lifetime employment. That means people generally do not retire. No retirement age. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. No retirement age. But in India, after sixty people retire. So we cannot say that that the working culture in Japan a, an employee can never take leaves until and unless the manager is in leave. <laughs> 
Oh, see the culture. It is yes, quite yes. different. Quite different. Interesting. Uh, that, that is why is that even in America, the management style is that we should give more emphasis to achievement of individual achievement, not group achievement. Group achievement. But in Japan, yeah. say that we should achieve the target or goal of the organization in a team spirit. So team building is the main emphasis in Japanese management. Okay. Individual achievement is the main main emphasis in American management. It is contradictory. Okay. Not contradictory. Yes. American management is putting that if you can achieve, you go and go and go, forget about others. But Japan okay. is say that you work as a team, as a, as a team. group, yeah. as a member yeah. of the group, and try to achieve a goal. Oh. So that is why. William Ausi, in his Z theory of management, Z theory of management, yes. theory of management he has made a mixture of combination of these two concepts. He is going to say that the Japanese concept should be mixed up with American concept, and that will that is called hybrid. And that yes, hybrid yes. theory is Z theory, yes. and the concept of Japanese management style or management pattern should be combined with. American management pattern, right. and that will be more beneficial for the expansion and growth and efficiency, okay. efficiency or excellence mm -hmm. of our companies. Okay, sir. So when organize nature of organization changes, or when even country changes, our management styles also change. They definitely, even yes, situation yes. changes in Situ the same country. It yeah, may be different. Oh, there may be different different, different management for different situations. Different situations. Yes, for yes. example, the Winston Churchill. When he was the British Prime Minister during Second World War, mm. his, his, he was proved to be a successful leader in managing the or tackling or handling the war situation. But after war situation, when he was to undertake some measures for economic development of the country, he totally failed. Oh. That means his management style, leadership style, was suitable only to tackle war situation, nor yes. for peace situation oh, or economic yes, development. Yes, yes. The situation has changed. Change, situation yes, changed. Yes. They had the terrorism problem solved in Punjab. Yeah. The same people, if you bring to Assam, they cannot solve. Yes, right. Because sir. their yes. situation, is, situation different. is different. They will have to develop different management strategies yes. to tackle the situation. Yes, sir. Yes. So management is management is. And definitely, we, it differs from country to country, nation to nation, situation to situation, time to time. Okay, time, yes, sir. That is why it is a contingent approach. Yes. The, that means situational approach, according to situation, we should modify it, we should adjust it to make it suitable for the society, for the organization. Okay. So, basically, in an organization, what are the functions that management generally perform? Uh, you have mentioned in the very beginning that there are planning and there are controlling mm -hmm. in the same. So, what are the functions of management? So, these are the basic functions of management. So, can so you focus modern management has uh, undertaken high functions, though classical management thinkers, including Taylor or Luther Gallic, they define and that there are different functions of management. Uh, Henry Fell first identified in the world the functions of management. He called them elements of management. Okay. So, if you, if our students should remember that when we talk about functions of management, who developed the functions of management, yes, they, they should go back to Henry Fell. So, Henry Fell was the first person to identify five functions of management, yes. but he called them elements of management. They were definitely prevoints, organizing, commanding, directing and controlling. Okay. But his fu all functions are not uh, say accepted by modern managers. Even Luther Gallic coined a word POSCORB, P O S D C O R B, POSCORB, okay. planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, uh, uh, reporting, and reporting. budgeting. The short form of yes. management functions. Yes. But his reporting function is related to control function. Budgeting is a part of planning. Yes. So, modern management, five functions. I uh, have accepted uh, by the modern managers. Uh, that is given by Kunz and O'Donnell. Okay. These two authors, according to them, that there are basically five functions of management. Planning is the first function. Planning. Any function of management start with plans and programs. Okay. Then organizing, that is a grouping of activities, grouping. division of activities, delegating authority, 
responsibility fixing of responsibility coordinating activities this is called organizing okay. the second function third function is staffing that means recruitment of people placement of people training of people promotion of people transfer of people or uh, payment of salaries and wages to people everything is included uh, all all these come under staffing exactly. that is the third important function then directing that is it includes communicating with people motivation motivating the people and taking the leadership of people this is called directing function and last function seeing or verifying the performance of the employees or performance of the departments performance of the managers that is performance there is controlling function so this all these five functions are accepted by the modern management uh, modern managers and modern management and our students they can remember that there are five important functions of modern management modern management, modern management have identified five important yeah, starts functions. with planning the planning and yeah. ends with controlling but yes. planning and controlling are related to each other okay interlinked means if there are some had there yeah, been yeah. no plan question of controlling is uh, yeah, yeah, right that's right, said right, right. uh, you cannot control anything if there is no plan no plan right, because sir. planning uh, because control verifies whether everything is going on according to plan yes yes so planning provides a standard against which we measure the performance definitely provide a standard or planning set the objectives or yes. standard of the organization yes. uh, to be performed to be performed so in controlling we see whether we are achieving those targets or not uh, so if there are some uh, deviations. deviations deviations from plan yeah then we have to take some uh, measures, measures as planning. as a controlling function uh, in management so okay. definitely controlling function helps in improvement of the plan or redesigning of the plan okay. or resetting of the objectives okay so if there is deviation there may be some review of planning review of review of all yeah. the activities of the planning the may be updated or corrected corrected according to the so for better better planning yes, yes. there is there is need for better control okay so these are all related uh, related, related functions related of management functions, interrelated functions yes, yes. and this is a process it in a cycle so start with planning and yes. end with controlling next controlling means again planning oh, again planning yes it's cycle yes, it is it is a cycle very interesting mm. so when all these functions are performed by all the people in an organization is it like that the all no, no. people perform uh, i think you have come to the different levels of management yes yes there are levels there, of management there are here. different levels of management and all the five functions of management are not performed by all people okay generally we demarcate among the functions of the people who are entrusted with the responsibility of management generally the board of directors chairman managing director or ceo chief executive officer CEO. they are mostly concerned with the planning function of management okay sir that be deal management generally the managers maybe production manager finance manager marketing manager brand manager advertising manager packaging manager different managers different manager. regional manager okay. uh, general manager these managers are middle managers they mm-hmm. actually carry they carry the um, decisions of the board of directors top management and pass forward those decisions for implementation to the lower management acha the middle management act as coordinator between top management top and lower, lower management management. and lower management is also known as supervisory management acha so supervisory management is mostly responsible for controlling and the, your directing functions people are instructed given order people are motivated to perform properly effectively by the lower management that mostly officer sales officer marketing officer purchase officer or supervisors foreman they are lower management they are actually people who in the real sense implement the plans and policies programs of the yes. of the top management do they are concerned directly with the operation right sir operative people operative people so the five functions of management first planning function is mostly done by the top management, top management. the middle two functions that is middle. organizing and staffing that are by the middle management yes sir and lower management is concerned with last two functions that is directing and controlling So all these five functions are divided into different levels of management. Levels and accordingly, of management. the uh, top level management perform different functions. Middle level managers perform different functions, and 
Third but they are again one interrelated. You can say that that, that middle management is never responsible for planning. So you okay. are a marketing manager right. in an organization. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that you are not responsible for planning of your marketing? Definitely not. That is why in some companies, the marketing managers are made one of the director in board of directors. Okay. So he has two functions. He, he is a middle manager as well as he is a representative in the board of directors. For so his decisions, yes, yes, yes. his opinions mm. may be placed before the board of directors for decision. Oh, right. Okay. That is why sometimes he, you can say that planning function is exclusively done by the top management. That is not correct. Oh, right. Sir. Even yeah. if you are a sales officer yeah. in your area, yeah. you can formulate some ideas, new ideas, new policies, yeah. new plans. Mm. You forward to middle management. Middle manager, marketing manager will carry those, your decisions to board of directors. Okay. So indirectly you are also involved in the planning function. Yes, yes. So all people I know... All are involved, yeah, yeah, but yeah. degree, according to degree yeah. or intensity, 90 is 80 degree mm, top management planning right sir lower management controlling and supervising, supervising. or say um, di um, directing Direct. they are 80 degree but 10 degree or 20 degree planning they are planning, planning or yeah, organizing. yes yes very right yes so it's quite interesting and all <coughs> these are interlinked so actually manager have to coordinate among all these things oh yeah, definitely yes all functions all levels you have to coordinate um, the, the generally, middle management managers uh, yes, yes. act as coordinators. Yes, sir. So management has developed to a very great extent. So and most of the organized institutions are providing also management courses. So uh, can you say something about the, these courses so that our learners can benefit, uh, get some advantages from this? The management courses are provided by various institutions. In India, in during Nehru's prime ministership, in nineteen as back as in nineteen fifty two. An expert team from USA was invited to visit some important industry in India. Right, they visited and they were asked to find out the causes of low productivity and inefficiency of Indian organization. What were the main causes? And that team submitted a report to government of India. And they emphasized that in India one thing is lacking that is management training. Okay. So they started, they suggested to start an institution and accordingly in 1958 government of india started national productivity council npc a npc's first task was to collect the data relating to productivity and publish the data and at the same time training of our managers okay sir that was their first task yes but that was not enough mm -hmm. so in 1960 61 government of india decided that in India, we should have some special institution for conducting management courses. And accordingly, in 1961, two IIMs at Kolkata and Ahmedabad, Indian Institute of Management, started. That is the starting of management. But up to 1970s, in universities, there were no MBA courses. Oh. Only after 1970s, MBA courses were started. And Guwahati University started it only in 1978. Okay. And after that, particularly, after globalization of 1991, many private sector organizations internationally or nationally are coming forward to provide management education to our organization. Basically, the purpose is to provide quality people, quality staff for management of our companies in the field of marketing, in the field of technology particularly, or in the field of human resource management. That's why many private sector institutions are growing. You can say that there is a mushroom growing. Oh, yes. It is not planned properly, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. We have seen in Guitar Guwahati, a number of management institutions are offering management courses. But what about their quality? Yes. The basic yeah, yeah, objective yeah. is to produce quality people. Quality people. Quality for managers. Efficient man quality managers, yes. quality people. For efficient and economic yeah. effective management of our organizations right, right, but many organizations are expanding their management institutions here and there in different nook and corners only with the again earning of profits oh. that's the only motive that should not be motive yes, sir, if you are, your motive is only to earn profit that you are distorting this is distortion goal distortion yes, your goal is difficult yes, 
So that is why you say, your question is a very good question that management institutions are growing. Our students are also in, in increasing number taking yes. admission in yes, uh, different institutions. Yeah. But many institutions have failed to come to the expectations of our students. Oh. And that's why in the when they will go for recruitment purpose, for um, appointment say, purpose in different organizations, they reject, they doubt the quality. Oh, that is the problem. So that is, uh, again, in, again, I am one thing I am telling you that our management institution should try to quality managers who are globally acceptable, not acceptable by on, on India only, because most of the multinationals are offering job opportunities and they want managers who will be equally effective, successful in managing their organization in Japan, Germany or everywhere in the globe. Yes. So our management courses also need some upgradation, modification. Mm -hmm. The contents, course contents should be according to the niche or requirements of the global organizations, mm -hmm. not only to feed the orga Indian organizations. Mm -hmm. So yes. our purpose is not to feed the Indian organization, feeding the multinational companies. That should be our objective. Yes. So in today's discussion, we have discussed different aspects of management, whether it is a for education purpose or managing an organization. So it's a very enlightening session and definitely our learners will be benefited from this. For this, I thank Patak sir. Thank you, sir. We will meet again. Thank, thank, you. thank you, learners. Thank you very much.